Hello. This is John Zabelian, or Dr. Zabelian. I'm here to introduce a lady by the name of Bunny Sloan, who had experience of possible, possible cyanobacteria toxins. Swimming in Clear Lake, right at the Austin Park. I do investigate another claim, and this claim is in Nice by another lady pretty much the same time, later part of July. Now, Bunny, would you please describe your symptoms? or describe what happened. Yes. And the best, the best, you are on television right now. Yeah. The best you can remember. Okay. Would you please? I will. Thank you. On July 28, 1913, I went to church that morning. 2013. And uh, I asked my families to come, let's go swimming. So we all gathered together. We went down to Austin Park. The kids had gone swimming first. It was so hot. I went down toward the water. I looked at the water. I stepped in the water, and it was so clear, so clear I could see the rocks. I thought it was a good water, you know. And I got in the water. I went halfway, and I dove in the water. I turned around, got up, stand up. I started getting dizzy. Before I stand up and got dizzy, I, uh, my grandson was right behind me, not too far from me. And he said, Grandma, what's the matter? And I said, oh, nothing. And there was something wrong. I was throwing up in the water. I didn't want my grandson to see me throw up in the water. And he, he kept on asking me, what's the matter, Grandma? And I said, nothing, nothing, nothing's wrong. At that moment, I stood up. I stand up and I started weaving back and forth a little bit. I felt like I couldn't even move my legs. I um, started getting dizzy. I started getting headaches. I finally got myself out of the water. I went toward uh, my blanket. I laid there and I started shaking. And uh, I looked toward the dog, my daughter's dog, and the dog was like staggering, like, you know, a drunk would stagger on the street. That's what my dog looked like. So I laid down, and after I was laying down, I started to shake, and my husband said, um, you're freezing. I'm going to cover you up. And I, and I couldn't even acknowledge what he was saying to me, but he put the blanket over me. And uh, I, then I looked at him, and I said, I think I better go home. So we got the kids out of the water. They started patting their bodies with the towel. After they were patting the bodies with the towel, I seen some flesh coming off of their arms like with peeled skin. And I said, oh my God. So we all took off, went back up to the, um, well, first my daughter went and ran to the bathroom, got a bottle of water, poured over a dog, washed the dog down with uh, water from the restroom up at the park. Came back down, she washed it off. And sooner than that, that dog uh, started to walk around normal. Uh, after that, we all packed up, went home, and I thought, I'm going to get in that shower and see what happens. So I got in the shower, took a shower, came back out, went in my room, and before I knew it, I was at the edge of my bed, and I felt still shaking, and I was still getting sick, and I lost a lot of appetite of eating. I didn't even think of meat. I didn't think of anything that I liked to eat. I lost my appetite. Um, anyways, I felt like I was running a high fever, like I was burning up. And I couldn't understand why this would happen, why this happened to me, because I swim in that water for all my life. I live on Rattlesnake Island. We had a bunch of us, Jim Brown and all of us, that swim across the island to the mainland in Clillic Oaks. And this never happened to me. So I'm figuring, what happened this time? You know, So I was scared. You know, uh, Native Americans, they don't pick themselves up and take them to a hospital or anything. They try to see what they could do for themselves. But I guess I couldn't take it too long, so I went to Lake County Tribal Health. 
and they did some questionnaires on me and sent me somewhere else to get tested. And um, as for my kids, what I did is I used the ointments on their arms and wrapped it around and and they're gone. And, but uh, none of them uh, really got sick or anything, but they didn't like to eat either. You know, they didn't have an appetite to eat. Anything that we wanted, we couldn't eat it. So it was like, uh, I, I, at this today, I still don't have the appetite to eat that much. Uh, I used to be a big eater, but now I'm not. I, I'm kind of like I'm scared to you're frightened because uh, back in the day, my grandson and them got sick of salmonella, and that's what I was scared of. And they got that out of grocery store. So I'm still watching and stuff, and I'm uh, rarely go down by the water anymore. I'm kind of scared to go down there now. Um, I don't know why, but I, I just don't want to go down there. And I try to tell the kids not to go near the water. I never seen no signs or anything up there. If I saw signs, I probably wouldn't even have gone in the water. But I didn't see no sign. It was at the far right of the Austin Park. Then I seen fish uh, laying there on the shoreline. And I'm thinking, oh, what's going on? You know, it just feels like another thing that's happening in Lake County, or what is it? So my thought is that I gotta find out what's going on. And I gotta find out uh, if anything else is left in my body and go to do some testing. That's what I'm gonna do. So I could be for sure. Can I interrupt? And yes, you I can. have a question. I, your case was later part of July, I understand. Yeah. Uh, July 28th or something like that? Yeah, around 28th. Yeah. yeah. And you did go to a tribal clinic. Yes, I did. And they did not took the blood no. test. Instead, they gave you forms to fill out. Yeah, they just gave me a form to fill out. See, this is one of the deficiency that doctors and hospitals does not understand that importance is to take a blood immediately. Preserve it. If you don't know exactly laboratory that specializes in cyanobacteria toxins test, this is not done by every doctor office or any clinic or a uh, or hospitals. But we do have places in the United States who are highly qualified to do the test. If you let this go for too long, then it will no longer show, it will be embedded to some extent into your liver and tissue, but it will no longer show in your blood. So what I'm asking is, please doctors, hospitals, clinic, the first thing, take a blood test. Preserve it and get in touch with me or other qualified people to direct you to the proper laboratory. Cyanotoxin is not easily identifiable in, in the blood. It requires a special laboratory test. After you, I believe you said that while you were at the uh, tribal clinic, and they provide you with the forms to fill out. Yes. What they have said to send that form to health department or do what? To the health department. Health department. Yeah. Did you have a chance to talk to Dr. Tate while you were at the clinic? No, I didn't. When was the Dr. Tate got hold of you? I don't remember the day that she uh, got a hold of me. At that time when she tried to get a hold of me, I was in a a clinic with my uh, grandson in Clear Lake. And at that time, I told her I was in the clinic with my grandson, and she said she was going to call me back. Did and she I have? didn't call, I didn't have no call back. Did she, so she didn't no. call you back? No. There are quite a few other things, uh, yeah, but I, I believe you described quite well, and the symptoms 
that you have, I'm very much familiar, uh, because the blood was not taken, I don't intend to go any farther into it, uh, until I investigate another case in Nice, similar description. From what you have described, a cyanotoxins were present, irregardless that the water was clear. I will go into that description at a later time. I understand that you have to leave. Yeah. Uh, we're back, and I have a pleasure introducing a wonderful friend of mine in an outstanding rider that doesn't fear of anybody, whatever she sees, yes, she puts yeah. it down. John Moss. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you, John. Dr. John has been very kind. He's one of my benefactors, as a matter of fact. So, Bonnie called me when she said she got sick. And the very next day, I went to all the departments. And I found out that Karen Tate had a way of getting Bonnie to report that she was sick. That's what I did. I ended up at the agriculture department and Michael was so helpful. I learned that he had been recently um, applying the herbicides to kill the hydrilla, which is an invasive weed species. And there the herbicides are called uh, as sonar and copper as comine or harpoon. And this is when I called Dr. 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 Zbalian. We had lunch together with Bonnie because if you put copper together with cyanobacteria or blue-green algae, it becomes toxic. And Dr. Zbalian had just gotten an article published in Laco magazine about one of these instances in Australia where at least 140 people got sick, according to the article. Well, I have a book by Tom Sukanik about Clear Lake. He studied it for 20 years. And then I have a, another book that Dr. Zabalian was kind enough to get me, um, give to me, which is Dr. Cecil Mione. And so it wasn't the first time animals have gotten sick from the lake. There were staggering cats. And I pointed all this out. And to get down to the, to the bare, min, bare minimum, I believe that the copper that was put in Austin Beach might have combined with, with the cyanobacteria that was already there. And the signs posted say that you, can't, you shouldn't swim in the lake if there's algae mats or pea green soup. But what Dr. Zabalian told me is that there can be cyanobacteria and toxins in the water without the green mats and the green pea soup. So what I'm, what I'm saying is that Michael gave me the materials about the uh, herbicide and I printed those in my water column. And I'm going to continue my research. I'm sure Terry will continue her research. Betsy Kahn will continue her research. And the more people that work on this, the better. Because um, it's been very hard to get someone to actually report being sick. And Bonnie did report this. She followed the rules. And now, what happens next? Thank you. The number 140 is incorrect. So I guess I make mistakes once in a while. The number in Palm, Isle, Palm Island case in Australia, it was 400 people. And some were in the hospital for as long as a month. Most of your children. It is very well known that cyanobacteria mats, you never spray them with copper sulfide or any form of copper. Copper by nature is seriously very toxic unless it is in a solid stage. And I so did. I may go back and, and, and correct the, uh, my mistake of 140 to reflect 400 and they, the exact 
title is, I, I believe we have Page seven down. of the article that was in Laco Magazine. There was that one paragraph about Palm Island uh, and Dr. Zabalian's article that he gave me. Uh, yeah. The, would you read the, uh, the entire title of my article? Okay, Factual correctly. Information on Clear Lake Water Problem. That was Dr. Zabalian's article that was in Laco Magazine, published in, in the magazine. And Dr. Zabalian sent this to all the a lot of state agencies. You didn't send it just to Laco Magazine. No. That article I released as an article. In reality, it was an email sent to many of the state agency in 2009 trying to give them some education. I knew that they are very poorly knowledgeable in a field of cyanobacteria. I stated then and I will state now. In Australia, the Palm Island mystery disease affected 140 people. What you're saying was 400 people. 400 people, yes. Cyanobacteria blooms were treated with copper sulfate. Within a week, severe illness characterized by vomiting, hepatomalogy, kidney dysfunction was seen, caused by cylindrospermopsis rasaborski, and that's from Falconer, 1994, Gupta, 1998. And that's the way Dr. Zabalian does things, he does cite. And I want to speak for Scott DeLeon that he wrote this information down to look up himself. He looked up information from Tom Zucanek's book, and he looked up what was in uh, Dr. Mione's foreword, an article about al algal blooms. So I think we need to all work together. Thank you, Terry, for helping me. And. Um, the water was very clear, possibly because it had been had herbicide in it. And possibly the sickness was from the combination of copper and what cyanobacteria toxins. And the other thing that Dr. Zabalian told, told us at lunch, Bonnie and I, is that when the dead cyanobacteria are on the bottom, they release their toxins before they get to the top. And so just because the lake is clear does not mean that there isn't cyanobacteria toxins. Yeah, I, I would like to give an overview of what cyanobacteria is, is and how they function. Uh, basically, for too many years, it has been believed that cyanobacteria is a very sophisticated creature. Uh, I found out through my six years of research, which, which I have finalized in December of last year, part presented in January 11 to Delta Council, the rest will be presented by Europeans next year in September in New Zealand. Uh, what people, in a simple words, should understand which is the basics of all species of cyanobacteria. When they die, or before they die, they release toxins in the water. They absorb oxygen and they start to float. When they are at the surface, they are already dead. Patches of mats. In some cases you see this huge build up on the shore of Clear Lake. They do not originate there. They're brought there by the currents, the winds, the motion of the water on the lake, and they end up against the shore. Mats themselves only contain 10% of the total toxin in the tissue, the 90% has been released somewhere in the lake, not all at once, as you may believe by looking at the massive buildup on the shore. There are small patches. With each small patch that surface, 
a certain quantity of the 90% of the toxin has been released in the water. So you're looking to a circles of toxin floating in Clear Lake that we don't even know where they are. Some of them may have been pushed against the shores, mostly are floating into the lake. Simply by not seeing any buildup of mats, it does not mean that it is safe. You may have In one spot, a buildup of heavy, heavy load of toxins. 50 yards, 100 yards on the right of it or on the left may not be any toxin. We don't know really how fast toxins disperses in the water or it stays localized as it has been released. So it is possible that there are safe places to swim and that it's possible that some places may not be safe to swim. And we don't know. Because the analogy of what has been told to the public in Lake County is stay away. If you see mass build up, stay away. That doesn't mean that a lake is safe. It is, I'm not trying to say that it's not safe either. This is something for the health department to determine. They will be responsible. Here is a case. We just had a lady describing there was nothing, the water was clear, yet she got sick. It's a combination. It is a combination of multiple. Early part of July, I got an information <coughs> that three small aluminum boats in Clear Lake along the shore of the lake in Clear Lake, they were dispersing granules at night, very peculiar, three small boats with tanks loaded on their boats were dispersing granules at night. I assume that they were dispersing for the, uh, for the algae, aquatic plants. Uh, why at night is questionable. One possibility that I gave as my opinion is that at night the lake is much more stable, is not as turbulent as in the daytime, and the granules settles down faster in the location where they were intended. That's the only thing that I can say about. If those granules contain any copper sulfide, in it, any small amount of copper sulfide, in it. They should have known. Lake County should have known that you never ever use a copper sulfide at the time when the season or the blossom of cyanobacteria is in this lake. This has been known in health department they never, it's very difficult to, to really get to the bottom of what these people know and what they don't know. When you disperse pallets or spray, copper sulfide stays forever in that water. It's not a biodegradable. It's an alloy. 
it doesn't matter in what form, whether liquid, semi-liquid, it is still a copper. And it has a decaying process that can last hundreds of years or thousands of years. And we have them in this lake. So where is the mind of human element going before they do something? We have problems. We destroy this lake. Some are saying, oh, the lake is healthy. No. Six years of my research, I find now that a lake is not healthy. It's a human hand in it, a very dirty one. I did the test because even those experts that should have known better, I disclosed in 2009 in my article, which is present on Laco magazine, that there are no relations between sulfur, nitrogen, and cyanobacteria. It has been published by World Health Organization in 87. I documented totally through my research, not only in this lake, Clear Lake, but I did the Blue Lakes, and I did the uh, Mendocino Lake or Lake Mendocino, whatever the name is. Blue Lake, there are three sections of it. You have a section that's closer to Upper Lake, is known the Mud Lake. Then you have a center, and then you have the upper one closer to a Mendocino. In every one of them, there are cyanobacteria. Mud Lake contains three times more phosphorus, nitrogen is plenty in the atmosphere, than any part in Clear Lake. That cyanobacteria is not even toxic. Not even toxic. I understand why. Perhaps at some other time I will go more into the details of why. Now take a look Mendocino Lake, or Lake Mendocino, whatever the name is, does have cyanobacteria. There is a very low level of phosphorus in that lake. But unfortunately cyanobacteria is toxic but does not bloom. Why? There is no nitrates and sulfates dumped into that lake as it is in ours. The runoff from all the creeks and primarily Clear Lake Oaks, one single source provides more nitrates and phosphate to this lake, then Kelsey Creek, Scotts Creek, and Middle Creek together, all combined. The amount and the height of nitrate and phosphate, it is the cause, the main cause of the blossom of cyanobacteria. And when you have them all toxic in this lake and multiple, 23 species, different species of cyanobacteria in this lake. The main thing is to understand there are other reasons besides just nitrates and phosphate. You have a runoff of herbicide, pesticide. One thing we should understand and not forget that this lake, Clear Lake, has been used as sewer for too long of a time. Lakeport was penalized about 15, 16 years ago for dumping all the sewer in this lake. 
will everything around the lake for a long period of time has dumped everything. It's not a human waste. Human waste alone we have not caused this problem. It is everything else that we use in our kitchens, in our bathrooms, washing clothing, the massive everything that we use are cleaning their all chemicals. In addition, a massive medications has been done. Our major runoff of phosphorus are not really coming from actually I tested Scotts Creek and Middle Creek is ever zero zero runoff of phosphorus or nitrogen in this lake. And these are all Alpha Laboratory documents provided to me since I sent uh, I gave a samples obviously of water to Alpha Lab in Ukiah. It's a fact that cannot be disputed. Our major provider of phosphorus to the lake is Highway 20, in addition the runoff from the streets. Not from the hills, not from the mountains. For heaven's sake, those mountains have been washed for hundreds of thousands of years. There's no phosphorus there. They're not provider of nitrogen there. Plenty of nitrogen in the atmosphere. And some phosphorus in atmosphere. We are totally, the global warming, finally it got a message to everybody, which is the cause of everything. We spew, spew dirt in, in the atmosphere. We do it the same way on the land. The same way, the only thing, the fastest way is to dump something is the body of water. And has been practiced all over the world, and now we're paying the price for it. 